So my name is Pablo. I work with uh, Jean and Jacob sitting there. We work on uh, gate analysis event detection. So, uh, and we were using an LSTM network to, to do this. So just to set up the problem, uh, I work at the bioengineering department at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, we do gate analysis. In a gate analysis lab, usually you get a setup such as this one. This is not our lab, but uh, it gets the idea. People are either walking on a treadmill or over ground. They are wearing reflective markers uh, that you can barely see. They're very small, placed all over their body, which are tracked through a camera system. Uh, so you get 3D inf uh, position information of all the markers placed on the subject, and sometimes you have some additional hardware to measure other variables such as EMG and metabolic cost. What uh, you need when you do uh, gate analysis uh, is to identify the gate events, which means when your ground touches the floor, or uh, when your sorry, when your leg touches the ground, or when you remove it from the ground, which are called heel strike and toe off. And this is important because you usually uh, align all your data to these gate events, and in order to do comparison and statistics on it, you need to have this uh, well aligned. We also in our lab look at uh, some parameters that are closely related to the time that you spend with both legs on the ground. So it, it's important for us to have an accurate detection of these events. Uh, in, the, in many cases, and this is true in our lab, when we walk over ground, we don't have a special hardware to detect the events. So we'd like to use the motion capture data to infer when these events are happening. So the problem uh, could be set up as one of sequence labeling, where we have 3D information of a number of markers, in our case 18 markers, placed on the legs of a walking subject. And what we want to get is basically four types of event, whether uh, with left and right leg, when you touch the ground and when you lift your leg off the ground. And uh, for the results I'm showing here, we use a data set of 10 healthy subjects walking through three trials of 50 seconds each. We data capture a 100 hertz rate for the motion data. And we were using treadmill trials, so we have a ground truth based on the force uh, instruments that are, uh, are on the treadmill. So our approach, uh, what we wanted to get is uh, a system that from motion uh, data would get us the events. We wanted, of course, to avoid gross mispredictions uh, mis uh, of the events. We wanted also to keep from having too many manually picked parameters, which is usually the state of the art uh, based on heuristic that say, OK, you do this type of detection. You put this parameter here, this parameter here, set it this, and this is returns reasonable events. And we wanted an algorithm that also generalizes both to healthy and pathological subjects. Here by pathological, we work with a lot of people who have suffered a stroke. So their gait is no longer symmetrical. They, they work with a limp. So we wanted to have something that would extend to those. And that is not present in the literature. No one has really ever uh, tested a lot of uh, any data-driven approach we found that, that would work in stroke subjects. So our proposed solution is to have an LSTM-based uh, uh, recurrent neural network. The idea was that this has been shown to work well with time series in, in pre sequence prediction uh, problems. And ideally, it could exploit some of the temporal correlations of the data that are intrinsically present in such a in such a uh, problem. So the architecture that we had, uh, we uh, basically have an input that at each point in time has 54 dimensions. We have a layer of LSTM cells. We, the results I'm presenting here have 50 cells. And this is fully connected both at the input and the recurrent. Uh, the output of the, layer, the, of, it, of the LSTM layer is fed recurrently into all of the other cells. And then we have an output layer uh, through a sigmoid. And what we ended up doing was taking a, an existing uh, torch implementation of LSTM cells that uh, we found um, by the Freitas. We adapted this to work with our code. Uh, it had to tweak some things. Uh, this was an example for text. We had to tweak some things to make it uh, converge in our particular case. We improved, tried to improve some results through uh, using adaptive gradients, mini batch, to improve the, the time, uh, the training time, and also the, the accuracy. And we did uh, n-fold cross validation. The results I'm presenting here is just for a two-fold case. And we have some further work that we'd like to do uh, uh, from these results. So what I'm presenting here, we trained uh, and tested both with 30 trials of 25 seconds each. The results I'm presenting here are for the first row, we have a heuristic based on the foot velocity from the markers. 
which does not do very well. The true deviation is just the distance between the actual events and the events that were detected. The absolute deviation is the absolute value of those, uh, the statistics on that. The feed-forward neural network is one, the only paper that we found on the literature that was data-driven, and it's, it's not a recurrent neural network. So it has, uh, at each point in time, it feeds all the information from a given time window. And the LSTM network is our implementation. So, so far, we managed to do better than the heuristic, but we did not get to the non recorded the feed-forward neural network results, which was uh, a little bit disappointing to us. And here's a, a histogram of uh, the results from this other neural network and our results. And you can see that, well, we get, in average, we get good results. We still are a little bit more dispersed than what the uh, feed-forward neural network was doing. Um, so this is pretty much what I have. Thank you for listening.